all, one and all present here. With this blessing morning, we are going to resume the AICTE ISTE sponsored induction term refresher phase two program on active teaching learning process. On behalf of Mauli Group of Institution, College of Engineering and Technology, Shega, I, Professor Kalyani Gavande, glad to take this opportunity to welcome you all for day two, session one, where we will guided by Dr. Mohammad Atiku Rahman sir on active learning strategies and modules. It's my privilege to welcome our speaker for this session, Dr. Mohammad Atiku Rahman sir, scientist, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. I would like to welcome Honorable Principal Dr. C.M. Zadhav sir, Program Coordinator, HOD Mechanical Engineering, Dr. P.M. Ardhapurkar sir, and all head of the department from Mauli Group of Institution, College of Engineering and Technology, Shegao, and the attendees. May I now introduce the speaker for this session, Dr. Mohammad Atikur Rahman sir. Dr. Mohammad Atikur Rahman sir, PhD in Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, India, Low Energy Electron Impact Studies on Organic Molecules. Master of Science Physics from Vidarbha Mahavidyalaya, Amravati, India, Specialization Solid State Physics. Bachelor of Science, GS College of Arts, Commerce and Science, Khamgao, India. Sir, awards and academic distinction. Sir, qualified the prestigious National Eligibility Test, NET. University Merit, first in a Master of Science, MSc Physics program. University Merit, third in Bachelor of Science, BSc program. National Talent Search Examination, NTSC, during post-graduation by Hamdard Education Society, New Delhi. University Open Merit Scholarship in Graduation. National Merit Loan Scholarship in Higher Secondary Education, HSSC. His teaching experience is a physics lecturer in Government College of Engineering, Amravati, for during 1998 to 1990, it's from 1996 to 1998. Sir, research experience, the scientist from 1998 to till date at Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. He is associated with Department of Atomic and Nuclear Physics, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, Mumbai, as a scientist in basic physical science, 1998. TIFR is an autonomous and premier institute under the umbrella of the Department of Atomic Energy of the Government of India. He was also associated with the field of high energy astrophysics to study high energy gamma ray source through TEVE experiments. He has published 17 research papers in referred journals and eight manuscripts are under preparation. Delivered any innovative talks in various conferences and training programs. Also attended any technical conferences and seminar. His social and welfare activity, Sir is president and founder director of the Creator Education Society and the Creator International School, Khamgao, in state of Maharashtra, established in 2009. School have achieved outstanding success and awards by winning 419 medals in the world biggest Olympiad exam, SOF, conducted worldwide in 30 countries. This year, one of the school students has achieved international rank one in general knowledge international Olympiad. May I now request Dr. Mohammad Atikur Rahman sir to proceed with the session. Please sir. Yeah, very good morning to everyone in the, or, uh, in the conference here. I hope everybody, uh, I'm audible to everyone. Yes. Okay. All right, so uh, let me begin with a thank you to Professor CM Jadav sir for, and the organization, organizers for inviting me to share my experiences about a, a field of research which I am also doing on the learning and especially active learning. It's really a very praiseworthy and very nice efforts from engineering college. I, I see it right, coming from engineering college, a conference like this on uh, a subject of active learning from engineering college. I really appreciate the effort uh, taken by the team uh, headed by Professor CM Jadhav to really have uh, so many phases on such a a nice activity. 
active learning really uh, in our country, the focus on education and especially the research on education is, is very, very sparse, very, very rare events. And that is the reason I, I really appreciate and uh, I'm happy to be a part of this uh, nice uh, event, which is occurring in Thamlo. There is another uh, nice uh, thing for me to observe here. And uh, yes, so here, let me, let me share my screen to, for my, what I'm going to speak today, okay? So I am going to, uh, of course, uh, I, my um, first uh, area of working is uh, GIFR. That is my first lab where I do uh, research in science of physical world. My second lab that is I built in Khamgaon, that is to learn the science, uh, to do the research on science of learning. And I'm going to share my experiences today from my second lab, that is the lab for research on science of learning. So I'll share some of the very fundamental and basic aspects of learning and how successfully we have implemented the active learning process, the active learning strategies and active learning modules in our school. That is an experimental school for me. And uh, I can say with the, with the confidence that uh, ours is the only school in the country which is fully active learning school. We have completely active learning classes over. So what I'm going to share here is the experience I have had in my uh, journey of last 10 years at Amro in my school. There I visit very often, every weekend I spend there and that is my research lab, so I spend my weekends in that lab. And I, I experienced my, I mean, with the, like talks to a lot of students, I did a lot of research, all these modules one by one, I, I taught to teachers, I shared with teacher, I trained with teacher, and then I saw its impact on the students. What is the learning impact of this methodology on the student? So this was my research basically uh, in uh, training the teachers and seeing the impact of learning on the student. So some of those I am definitely going to share here. I, ho I, I know this is a long and a very deep topic. We cannot cover everything in one hour. I'll try to cover whatever maximum possible in this, uh, in this talk and I hope it will be very useful for the audience and the kind of uh, conference it would be very suitable. Okay, so let me start with my slides over here. Yeah, so what will be my plan of talk would be I will first uh, try to explain how brain learns. What is the process in the brain goes? Because every learning comes from the brain and every learning goes to the brain. So how does brain reacts to that? How does brain retain the information? How do we learn? How does brain forget the things? Why it forgets, how it learns? All these things I'm going to discuss in first few slides. Then I'll, I'll tell you what is active learning and how it, it is different from the passive learning, which is very widespread in our country. Then I will discuss the learning strategies uh, uh, required for the active learning uh, setup in any institution. Then I will show the learning modules which can be used in higher uh, studies, higher uh, education as well. And uh, some of them are used in our school also. So I'll share those in brief. Uh, I'll go through listing them and I'll, uh, in a short, I'll brief them. And uh, at the end, I will show the application and results of active learning on the school, which I just discussed about is the Create International School in Kamlo. I will share some of the very outstanding and amazing results which have come from the place like Kamlo. So we would like, we would see the power of active learning also at the end of this talk. And of course, at the end, we will have discussions uh, as usual. Okay. So let me begin with a small video over here. I hope it would be very What do we know about the inner workings of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do. From 
Hello, Dr. Rahman sir. Uh, I think audio is not clear. Uh, I think uh, our sound is not coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me check that. Yeah, but it is not muted. It's not coming to everyone? No, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, there is a uh, icon, uh, share with, uh, audio. Uh, in the share screen? Once you click on share screen, sir, there is one checkbox at the right corner, uh, share sound. So please make sure that you have uh, checked that checkbox. Yeah, I have checked it now. Let, yeah. Let's see that now. Yeah, yes. Thank you. What till the inner workings of the... It's now audible? Yes, it is now yes. audible. Okay, okay. Yes, great. sir. Okay, great. Thank you. What do we know about the inner workings of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do. What do we know about the inner workings of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do. From designing skyscrapers, to composing symphonies, Sir, I think uh, your uh, video is in, inside the PPT. Yes, could, yes. Yeah, that's the problem. If you See, have a separate file for view that video... You what can do we know about the inner workings of the... So you, are, you are audible, you can hear this now? Uh, we are not getting continued continuity in that. Okay, just let me... It that is, is what clearly I'm... audible. Audible now? Oh, yes, sir, same. It is audible for me too. Okay, okay, great. Okay, yes, sir, let's... it is audible. Okay, let's move human ahead. mind. Surely everything that humans do, from designing skyscrapers What do we know about the inner workings of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do, from designing skyscrapers to composing symphonies is not the product of simple cellular interactions. And yet it might be. Because everything that humans do, or think, or feel, is a result of these basic units of brain structure, the neurons. The human brain contains more than 100 billion neurons. 
just like a single ant could never build an anthill, a single neuron can't think or feel or remember. A neuron's power is a result of its connections to other neurons. Each neuron is connected to as many as a thousand of its neighbors. These trillions of connections provide the playing field upon which the complex activity of the brain takes place. Each neuron can turn its neighbors on or off depending on the signal it sends. And the resulting stable patterns of neuron firing represents memories and images and thoughts. We don't yet understand the relationship between neural activity and mental experience. We don't know what the precise pattern of memory or an image or a thought looks like. We don't yet know how to read the cerebral code of the neurons, but progress is being made. We can now watch exactly how various stimuli and memories cause the firing of hundreds of neurons. Perhaps these techniques will allow us to work our way up from the activity of a few neurons to see the structure that emerges from the whole. What do we know? Okay, so we have, uh, we have seen that our brain is full of neurons. There are 100 billion neurons in a, in a mind of an adult. Okay. So these neurons are also cell like any other cell in our body, but their structure, their functioning, their uh, way of dealing with each other is very, very different than the other parts of the body. In this video, we have seen that uh, an individual neuron, if it is not connected to anything, is of no use. Even if uh, when a child is born, there are trillions of neurons in our mind, but unless they make connection with the other neuron, our mind is basically not working. So whenever they make a connection with the, with the other neuron, this, these are every neuron, we have seen that every neuron has a lot of synapse, this kind of synapse, and it can make connection with other thousands of neurons. So basically one neuron can make thousands of connections. And each connection is basically registering one information. Whenever anybody, any person sees, watches, listens, or do anything using the senses, that information is registered as a connection between two neurons. You can see here, this, this is a connection made. So one neuron here, one neuron here. Now these two have joined here. One neuron here, one neuron here, they have connected. One neuron here, they have connected here. So whenever a connection is made, information is stored and registered in the human brain. Okay. This is the key. This is how our brain works. This is how our brain learns, retains the information and keeps the information in the mind. So more and more connections you make, more and more information is there in your mind. And the kind of information in your mind is the most important thing. What connections you made is the most important thing. That is how you are made. Your mind is wired. You get your mind get architect through that. Okay. So that is how the, the neuron connections are very important. When you talk about learning, neuron networks are a very wide field where people are now doing a lot of research. So now what happens, like what happens when a, whenever, uh, so how many neurons I have in my mind? So we know 100 billion neurons. So now how many connections we can make out? So each neuron can make thousand connections. So you remember trillions and trillions of connections we can make in our mind. But these connections are mostly made in our childhood. In the first five years of our uh, childhood, we make connection with a rate of 6,000 to 10,000 per second. So any information reaching to my brain through eyes, through ears, through my body sensation, whatever I feel, whatever I speak, whatever I read, whatever I do, everything goes in the mind and it gets registered and it gets wired. And with time, it gets stronger and stronger. 
it gets stronger. As long as the connection is there in the mind, in the brain between two neurons, that information is retained in our mind. The moment the connection is broken, like you can see here, this connection is broken. So whatever was information registered by these two synapses here, that information is lost from the mind. So that is how we forget something. And as long as the connection is intact, the information is there in our mind and we can always utilize that. So the core of it is to make the connections. Okay, so as long as connection is there, you are, the information is there in your brain and you can use it. Once the connection is broken, you're lost thing. So now, what if I want to forget something? I don't, if, if I don't want to forget something, this is where the learning goes. This is where every human being wants, every student wants, that what I, what I learn should never go away from my mind. This is where the learning, teaching, all process get uh, evolved from, okay? So, so I'm going to give some insights on that today. This would be very important learning for all the community here, teachers, students, and all, and as individual parent, this is very crucial. This, what I'm sh sharing with you, is from the very state of art research and advanced research. So the point that I don't want my connection to break. Suppose I made this connection and I, I want it should never break because I want to retain that information. So what, there are two ways you can do that, okay? Uh, as I, I wrote here, the same information is given to brain repeatedly. If we give the same information to the brain again and again and again, the probability of its forgetting or the network breaking reduces continuously. So that is why revision of any learning is very, very important. And if the same learning experiences comes many times in different forms, it will strengthen the bonding. It will strengthen the connection. And the probability of losing that information becomes least. This is the one way where I want to keep the connection on. I don't want to break the connection. So you, I have to repeat the thing. I have to revise the thing. This is one way. Now, another way is also there. The another way is same activity, same information. I get in a multiple ways. At the same time, I do many activities together. For example, if I am reading something or if I'm learning something, I'm using my mind, I'm using my eyes, I'm using my ears, I'm using my hands, I'm using my body, all together, suppose, if I do. For example, I'm doing some experiment, or I'm playing a mathematical game. So there, everything is involved. My hands, my eyes, my ears, uh, my um, body, my hands, everything is involved together. So that is the another way you make, because in that process, you make many connections then that will not be one connection here, okay? That will not be one connection here. That will be many connections together. So what will happen if, you, if your one connection is broken, there will be other connection that will be then intact, okay? So, so the things will not go away from the mind, okay? So this is, this is very, very important. This is very important when it comes to learning and the active learning is completely based on these two aspects. I'll explain in my talk how active learning utilizing these two very crucial information, knowledge, okay? Like uh, there, is, there was a, a Chinese uh, philosopher, Confucius, and then later Silberman also said the same thing. You know, you can read this, what I hear, I forget. What I hear and see, I remember a little. What I hear and see and ask question about or discuss with someone else, I begin to understand. And when I hear, see, discuss, do things, actually I acquire the understanding. So this is what is exactly what the philosopher and the intelligent people have learned today. That we can connect the things in the, in the brain, how it helps, how it works. So there are connections. So this is this is very crucial thing, and uh, this we will experience as we go along. I want to show you one more video. Okay, this video will tell us the power 
of uh, our brain even at a childhood and this will also show us how engaging activities and engaging with the material helps learning a student a lot so basically after this end of this clip you will realize the role of engaging of a student into material and activities and what a teacher what a teacher or a guide can do to a student is amazing it is enormous at the end of this uh, video clip you will see that that is happening okay so let me start this we could say that a neuron in the brain would be like a web page in the internet so let's look at the number of neurons in a child's brain compared to the number of web pages on the internet well a human at any age has about a hundred billion neurons in the brain but the internet has 10 times that one trillion web pages so with this analogy the internet is bigger so then which of these networks is more complex we could say a synapse in the brain, the connection point between two neurons, is like a hyperlink, the connection point between two web pages. So are there more connections in a child's brain or on the internet? Well, the internet has over a hundred trillion links. Hello? Is, it, is this audio clip audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Is it audible to everyone? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, okay, thank you. We could say that a neuron in the brain would be like a web page in the internet. So let's look at the number of neurons in a child's brain compared to the number of web pages on the internet. Well, a human at any age has about a hundred billion neurons in the brain. But the internet has ten times that one trillion web pages. So with this analogy, the internet is bigger. So then, which of these networks is more complex? We could say a synapse in the brain, the connection point between two neurons, is like a hyperlink, the connection point between two web pages. So are there more connections in a child's brain or on the internet? Well, the internet has over a hundred trillion links. And an adult's brain has 300 trillion links. But get this, a child's brain has a quadrillion connections, 10 times the number of connections of the entire internet. A child's brain has more connections than the entire internet. Yes, it blew our minds too. How is that even possible? Let's break it down. As we said, a baby is born with a hundred billion neurons. But those quadrillion connections, they're not there yet. Those connections form at a very rapid speed during the first five years of life, at 700 to 1,000 new synapses per second. Those connections are created through every interaction a child has and are important because they form the architecture of the brain. So every time you talk to and engage with a child, you are literally growing a brain, connecting the different parts of the brain, which allows for new ideas, insights, and creative thinking. So each moment of eye contact, each new word exchanged, each time you make a child laugh, you are strengthening these connections. And since there are so many different ways to do this, we ask people around the world Send us videos of your favorite ways to engage with the children in your life. During these early years, a child's brain makes as many connections as possible. And then it begins pruning the ones that aren't used and strengthening the ones that are. A dynamic process that continues throughout life. But 
Okay, so this was very interesting video. I hope people uh, have understood and got the idea. So see, whenever in the childhood, whatever comes in the mind, whatever goes, there is no control on that. Nobody can control. So whatever a student, whatever a child sees, whatever a child listens, whatever he feels, he or she feels, everything goes in the mind directly. There is no gate wall. There is no control switch. It goes and it make a connection in the brain. Now the point is, whatever goes in the childhood in our brain, in our mind, that is how it gets piled up. And whatever goes, that is how it becomes, it makes our brain wired. And that is how we become a personality. And our all neurons get exhausted by the age of 10 years. All neurons, by the age of eight to 10 years, all neurons make all connections. And now there are hardly any neurons to make new connections. So basically, whatever we fill in the brain in the early childhood, by the age of 10 years, by the age of eight to 10 years, we have actually wired the brain. We have filled all the connections, whatever possible connections we have filled. And it starts from the womb of a mother. Our sensation, our, our uh, sensation by our eyes, by our ears, they start right from the 120 days after the conception. So from there, the information starts going to the brain and the brain keeps making connections right after 120 days of the conception in the mother womb of a mother. That is where our journey of learning starts. And by the time of eight to 10 years, all our neurons are exhausted. Yeah. They have already made the connections. So our personality is already made in first eight to 10 years of our life. Now, what happens after that? Whenever the learning goes, so what happened after that is the, there are two ways. One is we also have a production of neurons per day, but they're very, very minimal, very small number of neuron we produce per day. Again, that varies person to person. Some person may produce one neuron per day. Some may produce 500 neuron per day. That is completely uncertain, not fixed by, we don't know right now what is the process of generating new neurons in the mind. The other way is you have to break the old neuron connections and make the new neuron connections. Okay, that needs a lot of efforts. Of course, that is possible. Many people do that. You might see some individuals, they excel later in their life because now they take everything very seriously and they make a lot of efforts. With those efforts, what happens? The old connections break and they form the new connections. Okay, so and now at the end of this video, we have seen that, we have seen that the, the, by the time, say, suppose a, a child comes to uh, primary or secondary or engineering college, what happens is all neurons are already utilized. Okay. Now what we can do is we, we, can, we, we can try to make new connections. That is what this, uh, in the last uh, figure, it shows that uh, what this is, this, this can assume at a teacher. Now this teacher is what what the teacher is doing is she is she is disconnecting she is removing the connection which are not useful. Okay, so if you are able, so teachers can do that. Teachers have that power because student is with the teacher for a longer period of the day, and the impact of teacher if it is very intense, it is very likely that you uh, you break the old connections and you make the new connections. Sometime the connection made outside the school, when the student come to the school, those connections are broken and new connections are formed. So that is where a school college are the places of learning. They are basically, they are doing the fine tuning of our brain. They're wiring our brain. That is why they're very important. We need to learn as a teacher, as well as as a institution, we should know how the teaching process goes. Okay. So this is how, uh, is imp what is important. So now how it connects to the active learning. Okay. So that is an important aspect. So what is active learning? In the active learning, same thing is done. All these characteristics of brain are actually utilized, have been implemented in such a way that the student doesn't know what is happening with him and everything is going in the mind. 
like you you can see that in active learning what is that active learning it is the students that are engaged in more activities they are also engaged with the material okay then just listening they are not just listening they are engaged with the activities like they are involved in dialogue they are involved in debate they are writing note making they are prob they are solving problems and they are also engaged in the higher order of thinking like they have to express their opinion they have to give their own ideas in writing or in speaking so they are engaged in those kind of activity like analysis synthesis evaluation creation like they evaluate uh, other other people's uh, performances they evaluate others uh, they judge the other things okay and they also create their own original work like they do research they go here and there find out new stuff and they then they teach to the other students okay so this is how higher order thing, thinking and learning processes are there so this is all together is active learning okay so uh, they in active learning they just don't learn the thing they want to practice it also students are trained to practice that also like i have learned something then i have to teach that also i have learned something i have to do experiment on that also if i learn something i have to do a practical on that i have to write that i have to express that i have to speak that these are the higher order forms of learning okay and this is what this active learning is all about okay. let's see what happens okay in passive learning what happened that is a traditional learning a student is a, is a, is a silent listener he just listens whatever teacher says teacher is active and a student is passive so they are just listening at the most they are making their notes at the higher level at the college level okay that is the maximum thing happening in the class otherwise they have to sit all the day at one place and just watch and listen and if a teacher is dictating something they have to write down that and then they have to mug up that they are supposed to absorb anything they are just supposed to absorb knowledge that is you have seen in the in the in the pyramid here remembering so what is the passive learning tells you you just remember the things don't do anything else at the most there will be understanding if some students are very bright so that is why we see in any average class you take in any school any college you go that there are 5 to 10 percent who are very bright because of their own intelligence so they go to the level of understanding and they crack uh, engineering and the uh, uh, iit and the medical e exams and that is how they few percent of them become doctors engineers scientists and all about that but the rest of them they they remain here only they struggle to remember things that's all application comes very rare that is why the few very very rare uh, out of uh, 20 lakhs some 3000 student go to iit because there the application is asked in the exam they ask all the application whatever concept you learn you do find the application that becomes very difficult so that is why the best we can do is applying that's all through passive learning all over country everywhere passive learning is a mode of learning in the country but then analyzing evaluating creating is not there it's not at all part of our curriculum we are very very far from there okay that's where active learning comes into picture so by through passive learning you can see you can come up to 50% of whatever they have uh, they have done so this is what happened generally in our class 10% is remember when you read 20% when you hear also 30% when you see also so nowadays there are smart boards so people see also but 50% of what they hear and see together and 70% what they say and write so see the say and write when you are going to the level of expressing your learning either by saying orally or by writing these are the expressive skills so active learning focuses more on the expressive skill that is where you you get tested of your learning and then 90% of what you do so that is why in active learning you have to do more things and that is where you learn 90% of it so what happens now in the active learning you do lot of things you do many things together and many times also so both the criteria of retaining things in the mind are satisfied here in the active learning okay 
So that is the reason and that is the impact of this, that the active learning, the graph keeps on going up and up and up. But in the passive learning, there is a limit. You get, you get here saturated. You don't go much before that. As the time goes, you keep on there only. You don't go up. Okay. So these are the basic uh, reasons why, why active learning is so important and why it is so effective. Okay. So I hope these two aspects are clear by now. Now let's go and see the strategies. So what are the strategies required as an institution? For as an institution, what are the strategies required to implement the active learning as a whole process? It is not just one or two things which you do and active learning is done. No, it is the complete process. It's a whole, you have to create the environment, you create the classes, you create the culture, you have to uh, set up a lot of things, okay? So those are all called strategies. Okay. So fortunately, uh, in our school at the Khamgaon, the Creator International School, from very beginning, from the inception of this school, we have been continuously working and uh, uh, developing all these active learning strategies from last 10 years. So whatever I'm going to express here are the result of those experiences. So uh, let's see that. What are the important aspects of, of active uh, learning strategy? So one is the curriculum design. This is the most important thing. Curriculum has to be well researched. It should be based on the research. Research in the sense, both sense, research at technological level, research as business level, research as, as the subject level, all these should be there. Only that curriculum should be provided to the student, which should be most advanced. It should be flexible and it should be updated, upgraded, continuous upgradation. Like in Cambridge, you will see every one year or two years, you get a new syllabus. You get a new upgradation in Oxford also. So all the top universities of the world, they keep upgrading their syllabus. They do a lot of research. Every year they publish thousands of papers just on the curriculum designing. Okay. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen in our country and we need to do that. Uh, from that aspect, I see that this is this conference has a good potential. That's, uh, the another aspect in the curriculum design, it, it should be the practical base. So there should be laboratories and it should be project based. We should have laboratories and we should give student projects. So a lot of laboratory activities and a lot of projects should be the part of curriculum. Moreover, as the left side I'm talking about, this is for the teacher, means for the institution to provide is the professional development of the educators. Whoever is going to educate the student, their professional development is very important. It is the key to set up the environment for active learning. On the student side, on the learner side, what should we give to them? What should be the focus? Should be the knowledge and understanding. Should be, they should start with, okay? Then skills and creative thinking and inquiry should be embedded in their minds right from very beginning. They should be allowed to ask questions. They should be allowed to discuss things openly. They should be allowed to express their opinion. Okay. That should be the kind of environment setting should be there. Then the concept and application in when you go for the science and mathematics and engineering, this is a very key aspect. The students should be given the concept. Like um, if, you, if you look at the Cambridge curriculum, they they teach problem solving right from KG2 uh, at the age of five years. They have two separate books for teaching problem solving, like a skill builder and challenge book. So students learn core science right from primary. Every year they, they learn so much. And by the end of 10th uh, year, they, they are, they're expert in problem solving. Okay. So problem solving is the key when, when it goes to the learning. Problem solving is not only in science and math. It's also there in English. It's also there in history. It's also there in the, in the real life. Everywhere there are problems. So to solve a problem, you have to make a strategy and then work on the strategy and keep checking that, okay? So this is the curriculum that plays a very important role in creating an environment for active learning. Then the culture, as I was talking about, so active learning, we all know very important, but how to foster that? 
how to enable that in the classroom is the biggest challenge. So the key to this is the culture, as I have already given in the curriculum, that the culture of active learning is very important. The student teacher should frame the culture. Okay, like there are the the the, the culture should be. They should be all kind of teaching, like formal, informal, technology should be used. Okay, then formal training of teacher, student, social networking. They, we should provide different learning platform. There should be push and pull models that should be very regularly used in the classroom. Okay. So talent management process, these all should be strategized first before we go for the active learning uh, methodology in our, in our institution. Okay. So once you develop a culture, once you strategize your culture, then you have to develop the active learning classrooms. Okay. Active learning classrooms are very important. Thing, okay. So in the classroom, since it's based on the problem solving, collaborative learning, okay. so the class setup and the class environment should support that. Okay. Like for example, in our, in our traditional setup, the benches are like that one student faces the back of other student. Okay. This is what our regular do. But that doesn't help in active learning. Like, like one of the very good quote where I, in some of the uh, very important book from Cambridge, I was reading that, that the, the rectangular kind of table, the round kind of table, where they, you know, student face, like I can show you. See, this is the classroom in our school, okay, where the students are facing each other. See, in, in active learning, the teacher is not active. Teacher is a felicitator. It just, she will not... Uh, get into that. She'll just make activate. She'll activate every student to get engaged with the material and the activity. So the, the kind of a table, this is a classroom where a student can talk to each other. They can talk across. They can uh, make pairs. Suppose you're going to have a, a TPS thing pair share. The student should be able to talk to each other. When a student expresses something, he should be able, everyone should be able to see this. Like in our, our existing classroom, a student on the first bench says something, so he, he faces only teacher. All other students see his back. So actually nothing is communicated properly. Okay. So the classroom setup, the environment makes a lot of difference. Because in active learning, you have an expressive effects also. Okay. So like here, you, you can see that the student can form group together, they can discuss together, they can see each other's faces. They can see the, into the eyes of each other's student. There's another set we have at the lower uh, secondary, we have a round kind of table. So the student can sit, every student is equidistant from the teacher. And once a student comes in, uh, teacher can be in the center. Teacher has easy access to all the students. And they also see each other very well. So these kind of classroom setups, this kind of a, are called active learning classrooms. So where a lot of benefits goes when you execute the actual models, which I will come later. But this is a part of strategy to set up the classroom. Then another aspect, very important aspect of active learning is the laboratory-based learning. Okay? So we should have laboratories. Like in our school, we have laboratories right from primary, upper primary student. They do, they do everything they learn is in the laboratory. They have all the experimental goods, experimental equipment, material, everything is there in our school. And from their books, curriculum is designed something that every book of science has only experiments. And they have to do those experiments and learn from there. Okay. Expose photosynthesis. I have also learned photosynthesis. I hardly see any picture in my book of photosynthesis, but in, in our school, when a student has to learn photosynthesis, he has to actually see the photosynthesis happening. Like he has to cut the leaf and put it into the beaker and then in the water, he has to see the bubbles coming out. And also they have to see the bubbles coming out are oxygen. They have to actually verify that by doing an experiment. So this is the, this is the laboratory based learning where a student actually do the thing and learn the thing. So, in active learning, laboratories are the key. 
they are very important. Okay, laboratory-based learning actually promotes active learning. It promotes critical thinking. It gives the student the first-hand information, and that is how we have seen that a student does many things together. So the information is retained very strongly in the mind. That is the idea of lab-based learning. Similarly, students should be given the project-based learning. This is also an integral part of our school, where students are given projects to do at home. These are not thermocol projects. Uh, these are not the static model. These are the actual projects they do at home, and they are from their textbook. On every unit, they have to do a project. And in the project, they have to collect the data. They have to make measurement. They have to do observation at home. Like we tell them that you, you measure the intensity of the sound as you go away from the sound source, like a water is dropping from a tap. So you measure the distance, how far, how far you go, that the, the sound intensity becomes zero. You measure the sound intensity of the television when it is on. Go far away from the television and keep measuring the distance. So this is how we give them the project which connects their textbook to the real life. Most of us have been brought up with the idea that textbooks are only for the examination. You prepare and write the exam, that's all. There is nothing to do with my real life. But what we do in, as a part of active learning, we involve students. We tell them that what is in your book is there in your life. Like when we teach them mean, mode, median, we ask a student to go to market, go to the fruit market for four or five days and collect the information from the fruit seller how many bananas you sold in last one week. Every day student goes there, they get the data and they collect the data. And at the end of that, they plot it, they get the mean, mode, median. So as a part of project, they have to collect their data, they have to plot it, tabulate it, they have to draw the graphs and they have to draw their own conclusion and make a practical book, which generally we have seen in our graduation. So they do it at right at the class three, class four level. And they, they present it, make a PPT. Every student makes a PPT. And every student gives a seminar. Okay. It's a part of the part of the curriculum and part of the exam that they 25% of the marks are on the project. So they give seminar. Every Saturday there are seminar. So a student gives seminar. And in the seminar, teachers are present, coordinators are present, or all students of that class, like we are giving for a high school. So all high school students are present there. All primary students listen to the talk of a primary uh, student and they ask questions. So right from the upper primary, class three, four, five, a student every weekend, they are giving a seminar. They are facing questions. Those seminars are on their textbook, on the topic of their textbook. Those seminars on the thing which they have done by themselves. So this is called the creation. This is called the evaluation. We are at the top of the Bloom's pyramid that students are doing their own project. They are collecting their own data. They are plotting it. They are concluding, making their own conclusion. So this is how they reach to the evaluation, the creation level that we have seen in the Bloom's taxonomy. So these are the things which help a student in, in the development work. Similarly, we engage them, we should engage them in the, as the world is going to be mostly online. So there are lots of platform where you can, they not only give you to learn online, they also give you the Maybe you practice test, then you, you solve that test. And then they send you the, the, the description of your, uh, your an analysis of your results. And then from there, it, it, they give it to the teacher also, they give it to the student also. So then they can analyze and improve upon that. A student can improve upon that. Wherever they are, they are lagging, teacher and a student can work together individually and go ahead with that. So this is online platform. And this is a management system. So that helps a lot. And we have in our school this kind of system as well. 
And the problem solving, as I told you, the problem solving is a key step. It should be, the student should be trained for that. So problem solving is basically investigation. It's a short investigation. Okay, where, where a student, it's a mathematical process in which first the student understand the problem and explore it. Then he makes a strategy how to solve it. Then he uses that strategy. And then at the end, he look back and check whether my strategy give me the right answer or not. So this teaches a person a lot. He is actually doing, this is a higher order process. He is actually making a strategy. He is checking the strategy and he's verifying the strategy. So these are all higher order forms of learning. These are not very trivial, just you listen, mug up and write in the exam. They are much, much higher than that. So, so another aspect of a strategy is the professional development. The teacher should be given the enough training, a regular basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, online training, lots of material is available. This is a very important strategy. Every institution should have a professional development program and fund separately so that the teachers are upgraded regularly in their knowledge and they are trained regularly. So we send our teachers to various conferences, workshops, uh, where they can uh, you know, get experience, get exposed to the various people coming from the worldwide institution. And this is a, this is a great opportunity. And this is very, very important for the teachers. So, and the performance assessment is another strategy. It should be on a daily basis. Like in our school, what we do is we, uh, in an institution, it should be very useful if one looks for this. We make an academic plan for a whole year, then we break up into the weekly plan with pedagogies. That weekly plan is with pedagogies. Then we have a daily class observation. Then a student feedback is a regular process. Then daily, weekly interaction, every Saturday we sit together, we interact about the strategies and the curriculum, design, pedagogies. And then there is a daily assessment. Our teacher makes a daily assessment sheet. Every period, complete assessment of the student is shared with the parents also, is shared with the student also, is shared with all the teachers also. Okay, what one student has done in a classroom, complete detail. There is an Excel sheet. That Excel sheet has a several column. And those columns, a teacher fill, giving marks out of 10. And that is shared with the parent every evening. And parent sees what their child has done in the, in the subject of English and math individually in the classroom. So this is a fantastic way where every day assessment is done and it is reaching to the parents, it is reaching to the management, it is reaching to the senior management team and they are taking uh, care of that. Then summative assessment and the regular reviews are the part of strategy. Assessment, I told you, they should be independent, reliable, fair. They should cover all aspects, formative, diagnostic. It should be multi-pronged. It should be oral, return, project, PPT, seminar, everything. And it should be by the external agency also. Like we conduct, we ask all of our students, every student of our school writes an Olympiad exam so that we know the progress of each and every student. They give a complete analysis of each student in all subjects, English, math, science. So we know the progress of our student with respect to the rest of the world. Okay? And I'll come to those results also. Okay? So these were the active learning strategies. Sir, how much time I have now? Uh, sir, 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes I have, okay. Thank you, sir. So now let's go to the active learning modules. So what are the modules which, uh, which are kind of uh, pedagogies in the classroom? We have this, uh, how the classroom goes. Okay? So we have a very important uh, active learning modules. Like one of them is the mind map. You know, after a teacher explains certain topic, after the explanation of a topical explanation or a concept, okay, a teacher should ask student to make a mind map. A mind map is basically a raw diagram, a chart or a flow chart or a graph, okay, like what, um, um, what is the uh, connections they have learned from different aspects of a 
uh, of a subject like you know uh, trigonometry is learned so how are the formulas related with the diagrams and formulas and their relations and the properties and all so a student can draw a diagram out there okay so this is the first level of formative assessment a teacher will come to know the idea how much students have learned and how good they are able to connect to each other this is very important so after every explanation every detail a teacher should uh, check ask student to make a mind map so you immediately get the reflection see if you take a conduct a unit test or a semester exam after 6 month or 1 month we don't know what has happened to your learning teaching here instantly within 2 month 2 minutes you will come to know what student has basically learned and then you can then work on each student who has not able to learn from there okay. then one of the module is the problem solving which i have already explained you that student are given problem like in and uh, they should be given the separate set of problems and the more work should be done on problem solving rather than topical explanation the more the problem they solve their skills their basic concept and there are an application level the both all increases okay so that should be a regular efforts regular part of uh, uh, regular part okay like you you know the problem solving um, is very important aspect in in the universities like cambridge and oxford so you must all have uh, you must all have experienced and heard about the one very important event that has happened Uh, see in Cambridge and uh, Oxford and all those universities, as I told you, they teach problem solving right from the primary level. So what happens? The student is trained for problem solving right from primary level. So the effect of that is that one of the student from the Cambridge University, he was just sitting on the pura, and somebody uploaded recently concluded IIT JE advanced physics paper. that a student was live there he just saw the paper and he started solving the paper okay and you know the physics of je advance is the toughest paper to everyone who knows iit right worldwide it is famous but that student just wrote the paper there itself in front of everyone he solved the 3 hour paper in 1 hour and he got 100 out of 100 marks before that he was never knowing what is iit ji he was never having any idea about it but you look at our schools our students in india they are preparing from class 6 class 7 every year 5 6 years there are classes there are coaching centers there are now business houses so they all are making so much of efforts just to crack one iit exam but why this is why not our student also just sit and crack the exam the, the the reason is same we have not developed the curriculum we have not taught them problem solving right from the childhood the minds are not trained to solve problems i remember when i was in 12th standard we used to get afraid of numericals forget about problems we used to get afraid of numericals that oh numerical kaise karenge it's very difficult ये सोचते थे कि पेपर में उसको ऑप्शन में आएगा तो छोड़ देंगे सबसे पहला काम वही करेंगे बिकॉज वी आर नॉट ट्रेन फॉर दैट इट्स नॉट लाइक अवर इट्स अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ स्टूडेंट इट्स नॉट लाइक वी डोंट हैव इंटेलिजेंट पीपल ब्रेन विद आवर स्टूडेंट इट्स लाइक वी आर नॉट ट्रेन फॉर दैट दैट इज द रीजन गिव कोचिंग टू अवर स्टूडेंट फॉर सिक्स ईयर्स सेवन ईयर्स देन ओनली दे क्रैक द आईट so this is because problem solving is completely missing from our curriculum and our teaching strategy there is a very important thing uh, i will not explain all the module but very important out there so there is a think pair share so what happens in the think pair share it is a part of our regular activity that teacher throws a question in the class common question to every student and very thinking question not like fact finding question thinking question and she gives 2 minutes to every student to think about the answer and then she makes a pair of two student and then she ask them to share whatever you thought about the answer and reach to a conclusion and then one of them will stand and he or she will speak out the conclusion after discussion so what is happening here the student has learned something 
Now he is to think about that. He has to share that with the colleague. We never did in our life. What I learned, I, I do speak that to the, uh, my uh, partner. And not only that, I have to discuss with and reach to a conclusion. And then after that, I have to express that orally to the whole class. So the, you see the learning process goes from where to where. Okay, a, every student has to do that. Every student has to speak out whatever he or she has learned. So this gives a completely different kind of learning process, experience. Similarly, class discussions. So whenever exercises are there, we have a trend to give the exercise at the end of the chapter as a homework. In our school, we don't give homework. What we do is we do class discussions. Teacher takes the student and with the with the with him uh, and uh, they then the teacher starts solving the exercises with the help of student. Teacher will throw the question to the student and ask them to answer. Some of them will answer. Then they will discuss and finalize the answer. So this is the way. This would be a revision of the entire chapter. So this way it will help a student to make more networks, more connections. TPS will make connection. Problem solving will make connection. Mind map will make connection. Class discussion will make lots of connection. So at every stage of learning, you keep on building the neuron networks. So the things become very, very strong and clearer and more clear. Okay. So this is how we, uh, we, we do. Then we ask the, then the writing class note is very important. So when you learn something in TPS, you express that orally. But when the note making, which is a compulsory and regular activity in the class, is that the student write also whatever is learned. This is very important. They should be able to write whatever they are in exams are like they have to write. Okay? And they should be able to write whatever they have learned. If the learning is perfect, they should be able to write. So that is a part of it. Okay? Then they also, whenever they make a note, they also compare each other's notes and find out the uh, what they have written and what he has written. Then uh, there is something called this, this we do not use, but this can be utilized, like summary of lecture in three key statement. At the end of the class, everyone will write three statements and, and summary. Then write one or two minute paper. This would be very good for the student who are in a graduation, engineering and all. Like You have to write a short paper. A paper should have a abstract, introduction, result, conclusion just in one or two minutes. Okay? This would be a very fantastic activity regularly. Then mini assignment. In mini assignment, what we uh, do is we make a group of five students. And again, same thing is teacher throw a very, very intellectual based question to the student on the topic. And she makes group of five students each. And then they are asked in the five student group, they're asked to make a leader of themselves. So for them, they have to struggle, they have to fight and choose his leader. And they have to discuss the question among five of them and reach to a conclusion. And the leader will express that uh, whatever they have concluded to the entire class. So this is mini assignment. Okay. Then learning cells where the, some students are poor, they can form a learning cell, make a group of three students. One is very bright, one is average, and one is who is lagging in that topic and subject. And then they can meet regularly and upgrade. Peer assessing, like when we give a project to the student, the project report we give to all other students. And they evaluate the project report of all other students. And they also give marks to other students. So that is peer reviewing we do. Then, uh, of course, we show regular videos to the student. That should be a very important activity. But that should not be the learning process. It should be the reaction to the video. We should ask the student to react on the video rather than just watching and sitting. Okay. Then role-playing situations, uh, this can be done in the subjects of language and other where students play the role of those. Group discussion, class games, uh, developing PowerPoint slides, like every student uh, has to do a project and make a PowerPoint presentation and uh, learn about that. Okay. Simulations at higher institution, this can be done. Simulation should be a very regular part of teaching. Everything which you learn, you should try to simulate it through computer, through programming. This should be very regular in all the classes. Okay. 
listening comprehension worksheet general reading general reading is another aspect where students should be given a project to read to do the literature survey read the paper related to that topic and prepare your own report from whatever papers you have read you prepare your own abstract your own intro your own result your own conclusion and present it and write a report on that that is where general reading will help you okay so these were all the modules which uh, which can be very useful when you go to the to the learning process and uh, the all these things we have been implementing creating in our school from last several years and uh, this is the school okay where we apply all these thing and we uh, we see the results also coming up okay so this is the school which we have built hello hello yes sir you are audible yes sir yes sir audible. okay so uh, the concept which we have seen till now the application of that is in form of the school and there are 300 students they are all experiencing that from very beginning there are no doubt they are very lucky to learn that they are learning there is no rote learning there is no mug up there is no memorization in our school there is no dictation of notes given by the teacher to any student in any class in any subject they write their own notes they prepare their own ppts they write their own uh, notes and that is how we learn they have a listening component they have a speaking component is a part of language learning in our language program we have equal weightage for listening comprehension for speaking comprehension for speaking activities writing and reading okay so these are the things which we do as a part of active learning and in the last slide i will try to show you the results which we got from the efforts of last 10 years so today only we got uh, see every year this uh, uh, science olympiad foundation is a body with with, uh, with many organization worldwide they came together and they started uh, conducting exams on the subjects of science english maths cyber and um, general knowledge now they have started from next year they have started social sciences also so they will conduct exam very standard exam very difficult questions so that you know a student a student and a schools can take a benefit from that a school can check their learning process how good it is it's a benchmark you can compare your student with the world student where our students are standing how is our learning teaching process is efficient and effective we can all test this through such exams similarly these exams help student to check themselves it boost their confidence it gives them a completely different kind of experience expose it okay so we conduct every year from last six, uh, 2016 we have started working on uh, writing this exam so in the 2016 we write we wrote the first exam okay where uh, where we were thinking that uh, if at all we should get one or two medal uh, for the whole school but in the very first year we got amazing result we got 46 medals it was really very sur it was surprising for us we were shocked also at the same time that we are doing so well out of that 16 were gold medal 15 silver and 15 bronze in the next year we almost doubled the tally because we by because in the first year we we were not even knowing what is the what is the pattern of exam what kind of questions they come in the exam we just came to know suddenly out of somebody told us there is exam you can also write some 8 to 10 days before and we asked our student to sit in the exam and then we got that result so it was a sudden uh, extempo then in the next year we got 88 medals and then continuously then we are progressing okay. our rank is also improving so the amazing today only we got a result few days back back we got a result that our student in general knowledge olympiad exam has got a international rank 1 that was an amazing result it was very very a uh, good moment for the school and for the student that our student from a local place from a town like khamgaon 
could reach to the top of the world. You could top the exam in which more than 30 countries students, more than 40 million students are appearing. It was really a great achievement. And today only we got a result on Science Olympiad. And in science also this year we got a rank seven. See, 2016 our best rank was 6,000, 7,000 something. But as we are growing up, every year our rank is improving. Last year, we had five students within the rank of 100. And this year, now we, are, we have got two ranks within 10. And this is not like one or two students are, are excelling out there. You look at, the, look at the number of medals we are getting. We have hardly 250 to 300 students. And the number of medals we are getting is 100, 150. And the total we got 447 medals. So in a class, in a school of 300 students, if you get more than 100 medals, so now you can see that this is the result of teaching process and the learning process as a whole, not a result of one individual student. All our ranks are within 500 now. So that's the achievement. That's really a, a platform for every student. It is not only the uh, very intelligent will relax, excel. And even an average students have got an opportunity to excel. And they are doing that. They are earning gold medals in the international exams. Like in by now, we have got uh, out of 447, 207 gold medals. 120 silver, 120 bronze medal. And this has been appearing in very news, many newspapers and all. So this is all I, I wanted to see as the application and the result of active learning, implementation of the strategies and the modules in our school. And I hope this would be useful for many institutions across the country, even at the higher education level. This would be very, very useful model that can be implemented. Okay, so with this, I would like to thank you everyone for um, attending and listening my experiences with a lot of patience. And uh, yeah, if there are questions, I would be happy to take the questions. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Participants can the. Uh... Raise your hand so you can directly unmute yourself and you can interact with the expert person. If you have any queries, you can directly ask or you can write down in chat box. Sir, I think there are no questions from participants. Yes, it was a uh, uh, excellent session from your side. I would say that it is really a classic example of implementing the active learning methodologies and strategies at your school. So uh, basically you, what you said that is creating active learning culture, that is most important. Yes. Uh, we do agree that ecosystem is after all most important parameter if you really taste the results of active learning strategies. And uh, that shows from your results that more than 447 medals you could fetch out that too for, for a students who are from such a rural area. Uh, like Khamga is a small town, everybody knows. And really it is a transformation of the students uh, which you are taking out from the uh, hats off to you, sir. It was a really a great example how one should go for implementing of active learning methodologies. Great session, sir, and we will have a definitely uh, uh, learning from your session, and we will try to correlate it with higher education uh, and the students of uh, at degree level, so that our students will also get this type of results. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is one question. I think there are some questions on the chat yeah, box. Definitely. Uh, we if can you take... allow me, I can answer that question. Yeah, definitely. You can.
yeah so one one of the question is with 100 students in a class is it practicable so i can say it is not practicable for 100 students every active learning class is the maximum size in our school is 30 students okay because it is a student centric learning so you cannot focus you cannot pay attention if there are more students so this kind of a classroom or this kind of a strategy works for a smaller number of students in the class so that is how one of the key ingredients for active learning is you should not have a very large size of the class so 100 is too large and i know in our schools nowadays there are 80 to 100 students per class so active learning will be almost impossible because whatever are the parameters you need to follow in active learning they are not possible to do for 100 students together in a one class so the class size should be very small this is very important in our school we do not take more than 30 student per class that is how we are able to do it effectively this is what i would uh, like to answer that questions yeah uh, dr atik this is a very wonderful session really i am very happy and uh, very much impressed and uh, first of all congratulate you uh, you are doing a research in your subject science and technology at tfa but along with that i am very happy that being uh, a teacher and being a scientist uh, parallelly you carried out the research in uh, active teaching learning and really is very great i like your presentation because uh, uh, you rightly uh, explain the brain neurology and its mapping really it's a wonderful combination because whenever we are talking about the active learning uh, process or teaching yesterday i gave the speech on active teaching learning strategies and uh, today you have given uh, the process it's a very wonderful session that's why uh, so you nicely explain the mapping of a brain and all this so this is really uh, amazing and this will be a good lessons for all the participants and all the teacher along with that uh, you have given some very good suggestions being i am an administrator as a principal i am always seeking to give some good instructions to the teacher but thank you did that job very well uh, parallelly you give some suggestions some professional uh, uh, development suggestions also that teacher should have a professional and a continuous development that is a continuous process that's great and uh, my uh, you have explained the progressive pedagogy also because yesterday i was talking about what the pedagogy we were using from so many days now it is need to be changed because earlier it was a teacher centric it was a complete passive kind of pedagogy but now uh, it should be a learning learner centric and uh, you nicely explained the progressive pedagogy i am very happy this experiments you are using on uh the children that's uh, at the crater school and uh, one thing i observed that this is the best uh, example or this is the best case study example of uh, the active learning uh, process and uh, teaching our theme for the complete week we are talking about uh, the active learning process and this is a right time that we choose this subject because of the pandemic situation now this kind of active uh, learning process is needed the teacher has to do some different kind of things from many years the teachers just they are using blackboard and a chalk box chalk so just they have they were not thinking of other than anything and you might be knowing that in many of the traditional institutions schools and so on once uh, uh, the subject taught by a teacher for many and many years he or she taught only a one subject Uh, with the same method with the same notes with no pedagogy no active learning and so on but now the days have been changed you need to change continuously and hands up to you though you are busy in pfr but uh, you are keeping an eye at your home town that's a great uh, i salute to your workshop workmanship thanks associated with that and uh, very good lecture thank you thank you i hope that in future also we can have this kind of uh, better better interaction thank you thank you very much sure sir sure definitely thank you so much for you know uh, observing and uh, watching the things very keenly and very 
uh, intuitively and it's really a great a great pleasure to be here and talk with you and you know hearing your response on my speech okay so it's really good we i, I would be really happy to work more on the active learning process in the college and all there are a lot of new things coming up like blended learning and all which will help uh, i mean you know teaching through online and all i couldn't talk much about that but we can also have a lot of discussion on that so definitely in future looking ahead for more such interactions and thank you again for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences and uh, have a nice day sir thank you so much thank you or to kalyani ma'am yes sir thank you so much sir uh, for briefing us about the topic active learning strategies and modules sharing us about active and passive learning tell us how important active learning is and the knowledge of a uh, neurons network by watching video we get clear idea about how neurons work and importance of neurons so it was very interactive session all participants are active during the session thank you so much for giving the excellent coverage to the topic so it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for the event to honorable speaker dr mohammad atikur rahman sir thank you sir for taking the time from your busy schedule and sharing your valuable insight on the subject thank you so much sir for excellent coverage to the subject i would like to express heartfelt thanks to our beloved principal dr c m jadhav sir for encouraging us to arrange such kind of session i express my thanks to all the present attendees for their cooperation and the participants please uh, all the participants please take a note feedback link is share in the chat box please refer to the link for your valuable feedback and meeting link for next session will be provided on whatsapp group session 2 will start at sharp 1:30 pm in which dr sunil dat sir will deliver expert talk on evaluation concept purposes types characteristics and technique of evaluation so be there before at least 5 to 10 minutes earlier so on this behalf on this note would like to seek permission from dignitaries to end the session or anyone would like to add something hello uh, madam i think you wrongly told about the second session uh, uh, the sec second session would be by dr sandeep pankhade okay uh, sorry uh, his, his topic would be at risk based creative pedagogy he is a chairman of trip chapter trees association of asia and professor and head production engineering department assms college of engineering pune it would be a really okay. innovative kind of uh, topic trees based creative pedagogy is really not uh, uh, new known to all the participants so i request all participants should attend should not miss this session it is something a different kind of stuff you will get Uh, during this session thank you very much sorry sir so on behalf of dignitaries and organizing committee i declare that the program is over and we will resume shortly at 130 pm thank you thank, so much thank you ma'am